Alright guys, so hopefully you watched my last tutorial, number 68, and now you're watching the 69th tutorial, and in this tutorial we're going to be finishing up the program that, well I don't know if we're going to be finishing it, but we're going to be continuing the program that we started in the last tutorial. So in the last tutorial what we did is we basically built the main functionality for our program. The only thing that we didn't do is handle the other items except for four. So I already told you guys that what this loop does is it tests this variable what they want and if it's equal to one it should print out the plain items. If it's equal to two it should print out the helpful items. If they enter to the number three then it should print out the items that are harmful to the character. So what we want to do is we want to test this what they want variable for one two or three. Now what we can do is make a bunch of different if statements but remember I told you guys whenever you're testing a single variable for multiple values it's better to use a switch statement. Now a switch statement takes one parameter the variable what they want and it tests it a bunch of against a bunch of different cases. So let's go ahead and finish this by we need the curly braces right here and inside the curly braces of the switch statement we write all those different cases. So we go ahead and we first write in the case of one what do we want to do and we're going to be wanting to display these items and we can write all the code right here but since we're going to be displaying the items multiple times it's better to build a function later on. So let's go ahead and just Again, I didn't build this function yet, we're going to be building it later on, but let's go ahead and build a function called display items, and whenever we enter 1, we're going to pass in the parameter 1. Now display items, like I said, is going to be a function that takes one parameter, depending on what parameter it takes, it knows what items to print out. So whenever we display items with the parameter 1, it's going to print out the plain items. So of course, remember we add break after every case so it doesn't go to the rest of the cases. And let me just go ahead and copy this two more times. So in the case of two and in the case of three. So if what they want is equal to two, then we want to display items with the parameter two. If they enter three, that means that they want to print out the harmful items. So we'll go ahead and write a function display items that takes the parameter three. Now check it out this main function is done completely. We don't have to do anything else to this main function. The only thing we have to do is build this display items function. Pretty cool, huh? So let me go ahead and come down here and the first thing, like I said, that I like to do whenever I'm building a function is add a comment. Now I'll just go ahead and put display items function. Now this function it's only going to print out stuff on the screen. That's its only job to display items. So let's go ahead and make void as a return type. We're not getting any information back. It's just going to print out something. It's just going to, you know, do the dirty work for us. So it's void. We're not asking for anything back in return. We're just asking it to do something. So now let's go ahead and write display items. And of course, remember, it needs to know what items you want. One, two, or three. It basically needs to know what choice did you enter, one, two, or three. So we're going to be passing it in an integer parameter, just like that. Now, well, the first thing I want to do before I continue is go ahead and prototype my function. And remember to prototype your function one last time, go ahead and copy the header and paste it right above your main. And the reason we prototype functions one more time is because whenever we come across it right here in our main program, it knows that it's a function that we made later on right down there. Um, hopefully you guys watched my series before and you should know that. But anyways, let's go ahead and build this display items function. So the very first thing that we need to do is we need to have access to that file where all the items are. And remember, this is the file right here with all the items in it in, you know, whatever this is, the effect of energy on our character or whatever. So remember, we already know how to open a file to gain access to it and that's through an if stream object and by the way before I even finish typing that make sure you have included your f stream this is pretty much the header file that allows you to have access to the files so in order to read information from a file we need to make an if stream object and just go ahead and name your object you know objects file by the way I named this file objects, so that's why I'm naming this objects file. 
and of course we can put this on two different lines but it takes the optional constructor of what file do you want to associate this object to and we want to associate this object with a objects dot text file that's the text file that I just showed you guys now after this we need to make two variables the first variable is going to store the name of the object and the second variable is going to store you know the power or the energy whatever you want to call this thing I'll call it power so the first variable is going to be a string variable and it's going to store the name of the object the next variable is going to be a double variable and this is going to store the power of the object so now what we can do is the first thing we want to test is what choice did they enter so we're going to be making a bunch of different if statements we can make a switch statement but I think if will look a little bit neater so we'll say alright if the choice they entered which is X is equal to 1 then check it out that means that they want to display the plain items in other words they want to display the items that has zero effect on our character so if the choice they entered is equal to 1 what do we want to do well we want to go ahead and first here's what we're going to do we're going to loop through each object we're going to loop through this one this one then this one then this one then this one each time we loop through we're going to want to check if the power is equal to zero if the power is equal to zero then we're going to want to go ahead and print it out so it's going to say alright loop through this one print it out loop through this one don't print it out don't print it out print it out print it out uh-uh 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 so that's what it's basically going to do so the first thing we need to do is is loop through each object and we in order to do that if you remember from let's see I want to say two tutorials ago we can just go ahead and make a while loop and in this while loop just go ahead and write come on there we go I was waiting for it to pop up go ahead and write your object file and then go ahead and we're going to store the first thing in name and we're going to store the second thing in power and this is going to loop through as long as your file is open so it's going to say alright loop through the first thing store it in name and store it in power so now what we want to do is we want to check alright whenever you loop through an item and the power is equal to I'll just go ahead I don't want to add that space if the power is equal to zero then go ahead and print it out so see out name of the object and then we'll just go ahead and add a little space and then the power and then we'll go ahead and end that line so basically we're going to be looping through this whole file whenever it gets to an item where the power is equal to zero print it out on the screen now let's go ahead and copy this two more times and we'll say alright remember X is the choice that they entered so if they enter the choice of number two then they want to print out the helpful items just like that so whenever they want to print out the helpful items we know that the power must be greater than zero because remember a helpful item is like a candy or a soda where the power is greater than zero so what this is going to do is whenever they enter the choice two, print out the items that have a power greater than zero and whenever they enter the choice three print out the items that have power of less than zero and these items are you know a ninja meth and a dirty needle all those items that are harmful items have a power of less than zero right like that so basically our program is complete this is ready to run and I know you guys are just itching for me to press this build and run button and see this program go to work but I'm actually going to be doing that in the next tutorial because first I want you guys to watch one of my other videos kind of sucker you into that one and also I'm going to be showing you guys that it does indeed run perfectly I actually in between these videos I'm going to check for errors and make sure I didn't mess up anything and I'm also going to be talking through you guys one more time to clear up any you know confusing things that or any questions that you guys might have so thank you guys for watching I cannot wait to press this button so I guess you guys are going to have to see me uh, press it in the next tutorial so thank you guys don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you guys next tutorial